Hello and welcome to the session in which we would look at a task-based simulations on the CPA exam that deals with the liquidating distribution to 10% owner. What's interesting about this scenario is the fact that it's going to speak to four different company structure, C-Corp, S-Corp, general partnership, and limited partnership. It's also going to involve that as well. So it's very important that you have a good understanding about this simulation. So this is a liquidating distribution to 10% owner. Before we start, I would like to remind you that if you are a CPA candidate or an accounting student for that matter, I strongly suggest you check out my website, farhatlectures.com. I don't replace your Becker, Roger, Gleam, Wiley, or any other CPA review course. I wish I can, I can't. But what I can do is I can be a useful addition to your CPA review course. I can add 10 to 15 points to your CPA exam by explaining the material as you have learned it in college. I don't assume any prior knowledge. I will teach you the material from scratch. That's why in conjunction with your, with your CPA review course, you will do very well on the exam. And here's your risk. Try me out for a month, $29.99 a month. See if it works for you. If it doesn't, too bad, you lost $30. Your reward is passing the exam. Now, you're saying, why would I risk my money? Well, check out my LinkedIn recommendation. Look at what other people said when they used my system in conjunction with their CPA review course. Are you willing to take that risk, potentially passing the exam? If so, try, try out my subscription. And if not for anything, check out my website to find out how well your university doing or not well doing on the CPA exam. I do have resources for other accounting, CPA sections, finance, audit courses as well. Please like this recording, share it, connect with me on Instagram and Facebook. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this problem and use an Excel sheet because it's much easier to use it in an Excel sheet because I can use formulas, it's easier for you to follow. So here's the Excel sheet. So we have a company, Maggie Company, had a 10% owner distribution. The pre-distribution basis is 30,000. The asset distributed was a piece of land uh, that's uh, held as an investment, a fair market value of 30. The adjusted basis for the company itself is 15 thousand that's what we have so far we have a non, we have liabilities non-recourse debt we have a non-recourse debt and recourse debt and total liabilities of fifty thousand then they're asking us to compute the total gain or loss recognized by the company total gain or loss recognized by adam the shareholder and the adam basis and the asset distributed because we have adam as a 10 percent shareholder in this company so Let's go ahead and start to solve this problem. Now, let me tell you this. If you really know the rules, this simulation, it looks like it's a lot of work, but once you know the rules, it's not really a lot of work. So I'm gonna try to sh give you the shortcuts, but this is not how I usually teach, but this is what I want. I wanna, I wanna give you the, the shortcut, like to know exactly how to solve this problem. Obviously, I have a lot of time explaining, I have a lot of lectures explaining distribution for C, S, so on and so forth on four hat lectures within my, within my lessons. But on the exam, you want to remember those quick rules that's going to help you solve the problem. First, what is the total gain or loss recognized by the company itself? So when you're looking at gain or loss, remember the company, as the company distribute the asset as if they have sold it. Okay, as if they have sold it. So here's what they have. They have an asset with a fair market value of 27, adjusted basis of 15. So if they sold it, simply put, they're gonna have a gain of 12,000. So as far as the corporation is concerned, whether it's a C or an S, we're done. This is, this is all what it takes. It is the fair market value minus the adjusted basis. Again, the logic behind this, not the logic, Actually, it is the logic. The logic behind it is think about it from a you know logical perspective. Again, I'm keep repeating the word logic. Is they would have if they wanted to give you the cash, if they wanted to give you twenty seven thousand dollar in cash, they would have sold it, right? And they gave you twenty seven dollar twenty seven thousand. Therefore, as far as the company is concerned, they sold it. Then they gave you the money. Therefore, if they sold it, they have to recognize a gain, and that gain is twelve thousand. Again, whether that that is a C or an S the gain is 12,000. So easy peasy here, you should plug in 12,000 immediately. Give me one second to show you the figure here, okay? And 12,000 it is, and 12,000 in the 
for the C and for the S. So this should take, this should be fairly quickly. This should be done fairly quickly. Also, let's keep going. For the partnership, you need to know that when a, co when a partnership distribute an asset to its, to its, to its partner, not mem uh, to its partner or member, they don't recognize a gain or a loss. Therefore, easy. It's a zero. You don't have to think about it. There is zero. So that's also, we already finished one third of the simulation with basic or no, or basic or minimum, minimal ca computation. You just finished one third of it. Okay. Now, now we need to discuss this from the total gain or loss recognized by Adam. Who's Adam? Adam is the 10% owner, 10% not owner. Yeah, the 10% owner that's getting this asset. Oh, well, well, let's take a look at the, uh, let's take a look at Adam. Adam has a basis of $30,000. If we're looking at C Corporation, think of when you buy stocks in Tesla or Walmart or PepsiCo or any other company in the real world or Amazon. What you do is you pay a price and that's your basis. And when they give you something, when they distribute something to you, they distribute something worth of 27,000, you invested 30,000. Guess what? You are at a loss. You are at a loss. You invested 30, they gave you 27. Simply put, for a C Corp, it should be straightforward, in my opinion, too. And you have a loss of 3,000. And that's the difference between what you paid, 30,000, and your uh, fair market value you received. Simply put, you, you gave them 30,000, they gave you $27,000 back. You are at a loss. Let's discuss the distribution for the S Corporation now. For the S Corporation, remember the basis could change. So therefore, we are starting with $30,000. Remember, you have to know why the basis go up and down as well for the exam. Now, when we distribute this piece of land as an investment, remember the company itself recognized 12,000 of gains. We already, we already determined this. Now, as far as the basis for Adam, Adam's basis will increase by 10% because that's a gain, 1,200. Therefore, the basis for Adam is 31,200. Okay, this is the basis, the adjusted basis after the distribution. Now, we're going to compare this adjusted basis to the fair market value. So our basis are 31,200. The adjusted basis is, I'm not sorry, the fair market value is 27,000. So let's do this. So if we take 31,200, we're going to take 31,200 minus 27,000. And you're going to think uh, we have a loss. Basically, this is a loss because our adjusted basis are higher. Because remember, we have a basis of 31,200. They gave us something for 27,000. Now, the only thing you have to be aware of and be careful is the total gain or loss. Remember, although they have a loss on the distribution, they have a loss on the distribution. Remember, they're going to get 1,200 reported from the gain. Remember, this gain was 12,000. Adam will get 1,200 as a gain. Therefore, the gain will be 1,200, 1,000 plus 1,200. And the net loss will be also 3,000. So simply put, it's 30,000 plus 1,200 increase in the basis. Then we have the we have the gain to adjust this to not adjust yeah the gain to report. Therefore, the net is also thirty thousand. Once again, we have first a loss of forty two hundred because our basis went up by one thousand two hundred. Be careful. Be careful for the S corp when we distributed. We have a gain. We adjust the basis before we compute the total gain or loss. It's not 30,000, 3,000. Okay. So negative 3,000. Okay. Now let's compute the total gain or loss recognized by Adam, the shareholder. Well, if it's not cash, if it's not cash, that's easy. There is no gain, no loss. Therefore, also, as long as we know the rules, we can we can we can answer those questions correctly. So notice we didn't we did not really do a lot of computation. As long as we know the rules, we can go through this fairly quickly. Now we're going to be looking at the last the last issue that we have to deal with is Adam's basis in the asset distributed. What does that mean? It means when Adam takes the basis, when Adam takes the basis, what basis are they going to record on their books? Because they gave them the asset. The asset has a fair market value. 
of 27,000 in the adjusted basis of 15. So let's start with a C corp. What do we do with a C corp? For a C corp, well, they distribute the fair market value. Again, think as if they sold this asset for 27,000 and they gave and they gave you 27,000. Therefore, the basis is at fair market value, which is 27,000. Whether it's a C or an S, you would receive the basis of 27,000. From a partner's from a partnership perspective, they have a pre-distribution basis of 30,000. Now, when we liquidate, when we liquidate, simply put, we're going to have to eliminate this account, bring it down to zero. And we're going to give, we're going to give them an asset. We're going to give them an asset, which is the land. Now, now remember when this, when a partnership leaves the partnership, when we look at our, when we look at their basis, including in this basis, is their liability ability portion what is the liability portion the total liability for this company is fifty thousand. this is a general partnership therefore we assume this individual is a general partner not we assume it's a general partnership it means everybody is a general partner well in this thirty thousand, adam has ten percent which is five thousand well what does that mean it means we have to reduce this thirty thousand because they simply put as if we relieve them 5,000 of their liability. Therefore, they have to reduce their basis by 5,000. Therefore, the basis is 25,000. Now, they're receiving something that's worth... Uh, sorry, their basis, adjusted basis is 25. They're receiving something that's worth 27,000. It doesn't matter what they're receiving. If if, if, their, if their basis is 25,000, therefore, the basis in the property distributed is also 25,000. 25,000. Simply put, we're going to take 30,000 times um, minus 10% uh, of 50,000, 10%, which is 5,000, which will give us a basis of 25,000. Okay, that's that. Now, let's take a look at a limited liability, limited liability scenario. Well, what is the difference between limited liability and a general, general lib, general partnership is the, the, the debt. Now we're only responsible. We're going to relieve them from the non-recourse debt. So the only thing that's that's included in this thirty thousand is the non-recourse debt. Non-recourse debt. Okay. Simply put, what does that mean? It means we have thirty thousand, and when we remove them, when we remove them, we're going to have to reduce because you know they're getting rid of their li including in this thirty thousand the their portion of their liability, forty thousand times ten percent equal to four thousand minus 4,000, which will give us adjusted basis of 26. Although they're giving them an asset of 27, we only record it at 26. We simply put, they have a gain that's going to be the third for later. That's all what's happening here. Therefore, what we do is the answer is 26. Again, why did we, why 26? It's 30,000 minus 10% of 40,000, which is the amount of the debt that's included in this limited liability. Simply put, okay, let's assume we gave them the full 27,000. It means what happened is we increased their basis by a thousand. So when they sell this asset later, they're going to have 1,000 less of gains. Here, what we do is we say, no, your basis worth 26 and we gave you something mo worth more than 26. You would record your basis at 26. So when you sell it, your basis are lower your bases are lower, it means in the future, your gain is higher. All what we're doing is we're deferring your gain for later. That's all what we're doing, okay? And hopefully, if you can follow this and un understand it, not only follow it, if you understand this, let's do a quick recap, just real quick. First, for the corporation, simply put, it's the asset basis versus fair market value. Notice it's the distribution at fair market value, 27 minus 15 for the corporation gains. For the partnership, we have no gain and we don't report gains unless there's cash. We don't have cash in here, so there's no gain. For uh, for the, we don't report, sorry, we don't report gain. Simply put, we don't report gain here. For the shareholder, for the shareholder, um, uh, gain or loss recognized by the shareholder, simply put, we're going to have to take what their basis is for the C minus what they got. They invested 30,000, they got 27, they have a losses of three. For the S Corp, they have 3,000, but it's computed differently. First, we took the 30,000, added to it the 1,200, the 1,200, 
Then when we computed the loss, the loss was uh, the loss was the net loss is the net loss was 4,200 because we have a basis of 31,200 compared to 27,000. We have a loss of 4,200. Then we add the gain that the shareholder received. Therefore, the net is loss 3,000. Again, the shareholder no no uh, no reported gain because they we did not distribute cash. The, uh, the Adams basis in the distributed asset for the uh, for the C corporation, it's fair market value. For the S corporation, is the fair market value. For uh, same thing, fair market value. For the partnership, we had to remember to reduce the thirty thousand by the amount of the debt relief for the total. And the reason we did the total because this is a general partnership. Remember, general partnership. Let me highlight this. Let me highlight this. This is a, let me see if I can highlight only, yeah, I can only highlight the general partnership. Remember, this is a general partnership. Therefore, you are responsible for all the debt, which is if you leave, kind of basically we gave you 5,000, which is 10% of 50,000 because that's your ownership. For the LLC, your only, your only non-recourse debt secured by the building, we reduce it by 4,000. At the end of this recording, I would like to remind you, if you are studying for the CPA exam, if you're a CPA candidate, I strongly suggest you check out my website, farhatlectures.com. Again, I don't replace your CPA review course. I will try to explain the, the material in a different way. The supplement give you another alternative to help you understand the material. Study hard and stay safe most importantly.